Good evening, all. I wrap Dean with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening. Actually, I'm recording it late afternoon, to be honest with you, on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, and it's just getting on to 4 p.m. Central Time. And they're just going to come in with your settlement prices now as the markets are finishing up their trading. Basically, we had a day lower in the Dow by a small amount, and the other indices were basically higher. The markets that got hurt today are the ones I didn't think. I, I thought the Dow on a dip today was going to be stronger than it ended up being. It ended up being weaker than I had thought. Uh, and as you look across the board here, you're seeing different markets coming in that had a mixed bag. The yen down another five points. Traders have been very skittish about pushing this market too much because the Bank of Japan continues to threaten intervention. But, you know, traders like to test banks, and that's what they'll be doing here. You can see you've had a heck of a run up in the metal sector, a big one. And no, Bitcoin is not jumping in with it. Bitcoin is down another 440. And as you can see in the, uh, in the energies, you're up. Now, you're fairly flat on interest rates. You were all over the board today. You got up to the 4.45, 4, 4 5 area, and then you backed up underneath that area a lot, and you actually lost a few points today. Well, you had Fed Chair Powell speaking. He reiterated exactly what he's been saying, that until the data shows, the Fed is going to sit. You had Bostic speak today. He's saying only one cut this year, and if it comes, it's in the last quarter of the year, not before then. And of course, you've got Daly speaking, Mester speaking, and they still think they're going to have multiple cuts. You've got something for everybody. Grain markets managed to snap back a little bit today. As you look at the S&P for the week, you're down right now, not three quarters of a percent. You still haven't been able to mount anything that's lasting of a two, three percent correction in the market. And traders are waiting for that. and They're just not getting it. You can see how the market slipped back down right through here. You've got the pattern of a higher high, a lower low, not doing the markets a heck of a lot of good one way or the other. Same thing true right through here. You see that, don't you? How the markets are just grasping right for that as we talk. And I mentioned to you yesterday that I thought you'd see a short-term battle at the 18-day average in the S&P, which you're most certainly seeing with momentum down. I thought it would happen in the NASDAQ for the past several sessions. You're certainly doing exactly that. You got up and, and stalled out literally right against the 18-day average today. You came to it yesterday, so you're getting your battleground right there. And the Russell didn't disappoint me either. It came back to fight the battle there. This is so common as to what happens. This happens often in front of markets making decisions. What is the next move going to be? If the jobs data on Friday comes in weak, oh boy, we got to look at it one way. If it comes in strong, then we say, ah, does that mean a delay? Well, the naysayers don't believe the Fed will delay no matter what. They, they think that all these reports get run over with the next set of data that we'll get, which will be the April data and then the May data, which will prove them right for June. That is that side of their argument. It's not going to change till they get through at least the April data. Understand that. When you come down to the 10-year notes, as much as people don't get it, you hit these Bollinger Bands and it's off in the first spot. A market will give you a correction. You did the same thing in the five-year note and you spun away from it. When we look at the dollar index, you were up at the Bollinger Bands the other day and you snapped right back, supports all the way back there. If it loses the embedded reading, now, you have a 7909 reading. That's not under 79. Tomorrow's the key day for that market. When we come over to the euro currency, you got a nice bounce away again from the Bollinger Band. You hit this three days in a row. You did drop from the first day a reasonable amount, but you come running back. You've lost the ability to get the bearish embedded reading, so you can get more short covering. You might guess to the 109 level before you run into more resistance, and you're probably going to get a bit more short covering in the pound. Most of these markets uh, via the dollar break are going to even up is they go into the jobs data and the jobs data will set the next tone for whatever's going to happen. At least that's my opinion.
Bitcoin still sinking away, could be going down to the 63,000 level. The bias is down. The trend, the swing line trend has actually still got the higher lows, higher highs. Then we get to Brent versus WTI oil. And on this move, you would think Brent's leading the way and the differential is saying that's exactly what is occurring. And as you can see, now you're up to a big resistance point. You're back to the Bollinger Bands. You started nibbling at it yesterday and today you're squarely in it. And the same thing's been happening over the past few days in the WTI. And you've developed your embedded reading. So breaks in the market are probably going to be bought by the pros looking for the market to go even higher. There's word from many analysts, $95 will be there this summer in the Brent oil. In Rebob Gas, you gave up most of today's gains, barely finished the day higher. You could get another pullback towards this number. We'll be waiting. I'm like, I won't be doing it in May. It's going to be the June Rebob that I look at. I'll probably switch this over to June very shortly. And in that gas, I was looking for a short covering rally that didn't go very far, and you're getting that. And it ended the downtrend, but it hasn't begun an uptrend. So when you put it all together, we get a lot of data you got to look at. You got all this data tomorrow that we'll look at. And I'll certainly be all tied in on the jobless claims because this is my jobs week. And that's what I think you have to look at as you put this all together. And you come from there and we have our free offerings for you. Now, this is a different group of them. They're under the group I normally show you. And if you study the titles here, it sort of explains what it is. You just go to irapstein.com, free offers, and you click in this area. It'll put it in a cart. And at the bottom of the page, you put in your name, your email address, and we'll get everything out. I'm Ira. You have a good evening. I'll talk to you tomorrow.